So it's been a while since I did a tutorial video, and uh, somebody uh, asked me on DA how I create comics so quickly. Um, part of the answer is I do all my line works in advanced. Um, so whenever I get a page done, I always have three pages inked, basically, uh, before I start working on the next one. So all I have to do is basically fill in the colors, which the comic I'm talking about is uh, Define Hero. And that's the one basically where I use a texture and basically just basically bucket fill the areas I have because it's a simply colored comic. Uh, the hardest part is, is uh, shading. But to color all that in, I use my techniques for coloring in line arts, which I will include the video for that, uh, link to the video uh, I made for that in the description for this. What I'm going to show you today is um, how to use the multi-select tool uh, to your advantage. And I'm not talking about just the uh, lasso or the magic wand or the default circle and uh, rectangular select. I'm talking about the addition, subtraction, and all these features here which you may not have noticed before. Uh, first time I used this program it took me a while to notice that myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple line art. Um, bring this down to 4 pixels. Bring this all the way down. Should give me a nice thick line. And I create a new layer. It's going to be my line art layer. Let's call it my line work layer. And here I'm just going to be drawing lines. And for this tutorial it's not going to matter what lines I draw. But you'll get the idea here. And you create something funky up here. Okay. So, for those of you that read my Define Hero comic, I post that comic almost daily now because I'm sort of laid off from work. Um, going back in a few days. So, anyway, uh, this is how you can use the multi-select tools to your advantage. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer here. This is just going to be... Uh, just sort of like my uh, line, uh, my coloring and line art video. I'm going to make a layer for color. And this is where I'm just going to be using the bucket fill. And of course the bucket fill is this tool here. Where if you tap on it, it'll color everything it sees. Now, I want you to go back to your line work layer. And this magic wand select tool here. And you can select anything you want. Now, if you notice, this is what happens when people don't realize how to color or don't know how to color a line art properly. This white stuff shows up, and if I hit the bucket fill now, if I go back to my um, line, uh, color layer, you get all that white stuff. That drives me nuts. And I'm pretty sure a lot, a lot of people are driven crazy by that, that flood fill thing. So, to get rid of that, I'm just going to go to select and grow the selection. And now if I fill that in, I go back to my color layer, I've gotten rid of all of that. As you can see, my lasso has shrunk, or grown actually, to come in just a little bit to this line. And that's why you want your line work to be more than one pixel, because if you grow or shrink by one pixel, it's still got to show up with all that white stuff because your lines are just so darn thin. So you want your lines to be at least two pixels. I do a pixel and a half, which works fairly well. So anyway, uh, what I have here, I just color this whole open area, but I want to color in a bunch of these little areas, the same color, the same textures or gradients or whatever. So how am I going to do that without, you know, just selecting one little area at a time? Well, you don't have to do that. Um, when I first started using this program, I did that myself, and I was like, gosh, it takes forever to color in this comic page because I have to select all these little bitty areas. Well, you can do this. The section, second option here is Add to Current Selection, or Shift. I'm just going to click this, and watch what I can do. I can actually click, click multiple areas here. And so I can, collect, I can actually color in all these little areas here the same color. And so I'm going to grow this. 
by one pixel. And I can show you if I go back to my color layer. If I zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. I don't have to worry about coloring in anything else. And a lot of people uh, like my uh, rainbow gradients that I use on DA to color in my things. That's basically how I do it. I'm going to create a little blue over here. So that's all nice and rainbowy and everything. And no, nothing else is colored here. So I'm going to use my uh, lasso tool. And there's also an option on this, uh, on all select tools, there's an option for addition. So I'm just going to go here and select some random shapes. As you can see, I added on to my selection so you can see it goes beyond these lines. Now if I don't want to select anything, like oops, I accidentally drew that, I don't want to select that, you actually hit Control Z or undo, it'll deselect your last selection. So now I'm back to my old selection here. Now here's another thing you can do. I'm going to deselect. This is subtract from selection. I can use my lasso to do this. And I'm going to draw a bunch of shapes within these colors here. And what's going to do is got to create little holes. And if I use my eraser. I'm going to erase these. And it just basically took everything away except for these areas I selected. Now if you want to create actual holes, I can undo that. I'm going to select go to invert. Now it's going to erase well basically everything since I didn't have that area selected. But you get the idea. So I'm going to clear my selections, use my line work, and it's still on addition. Select some more colors, grow it, go to my color layer, and let's put a gradient on this guy too. And a gradient is just my airbrush tool, uh, it creates a Kind of nice gradient if you go nice, uh, go easy over it. At least put a hot color over there. I'm trying to be at least a little bit artistic today. So that's basically how you use the um, options in the select tools. I apologize for that little interruption. I just realized I had a timer on my on screen recorder for eight minutes. <laughs> Forgot to take that off. But I'm not about to do my first section of recording because that was good. I actually had a good speech right there, so I'm not going to redo anything for. Yeah. Anyway, I only have a little bit to go on this. Um, I might as well go ahead and go for a little brief example shading tutorial. Um, the first shading I like to do is uh, bubble shading, which is really frowned upon. Uh, you can do it for simple things. Basically, bubble shading, um, it's shading around lines. Uh, there's no indication where light is coming from. There's no shadow. It's just shadow all around the areas uh, that have lines or like the outside of an object. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my line work layer. Copy and paste it. And it's going to come up as pasted layer. I'm just going to go shading. There are a couple ways you can do this. Um, for a simple bubble shading, I'm going to go to filters and blur this. Just a regular blur. And maybe I can change around the transparency if I want to. Blur this again. Blur this again. The problem is with this uh, method of shading, though, this is what I was taught when I was, oh god, probably in first grade. Um, this shading method is horrendous. It makes things look blurry. You can you can use it for like distance objects, like way like objects way in a distance in your picture because it looks they're like they're blurred. They're not 
in focus. But that's this is really a bad uh bad way of shading. Another way you can do this is drop shadow. So I'm gonna copy my line work again. Actually for drop shadow you don't have to see it. I basically don't know how to use it, that's how often I use it. I don't use it. So I go filters, light and shadow, and drop shadow. And I've come up with this little option here. For some reason, it might not come up right away. Oh, you can play around for your settings. I like this default. Oops. And basically, oops, catching again. Um, your drop shadow is this. Wow, I am screwing up my video. Here we are. Okay. Your drop shadow is this here. If I move the active layer, I don't know why it defaults set to that. Okay, here's your drop shadow. You basically drag this anywhere. You can make the object look like it's floating up. But if you put it just under your lines, you get a simple bubble shading. Bubble shading is bad. I hate bubble shading. Um, but you can do that. I'll probably do a separate video since this video's gotta go on forever if I talk about shading in this video. Um, I can do a basic shading here, um, just to show you the concept of it. I'm going to select, select grow, select this to the softest brush as possible, bring the occupancy down, go to my drop shadow, and save the lights hitting on this surface here. I just going to go around the bottom surface. And then do a highlight here. I can talk forever on shading. I'll do another video on that. It was actually requested a while ago, but I failed to do it because I did not have time. Now I do. So, anyway, that's basically using the multi select tools uh, to do things. Uh, that's probably it for this video. I'll make another one on shading, I promise. It's. A lot of people were wondering how I do shading, and that's basically how I do it there, but I'll give you a proper tutorial on that soon. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe for future tutorials and other things. And I'll include my uh, a link to Define Hero in the description, because uh, I know I talked about that earlier on in this. So, thanks for watching.